Hey, what's up guys? John here from the Reaper blog. In this video, I'll show you how you can use EQ while you're editing audio to fix problems such as P pops and a fizzy F sound. Also uh, to remove some click bleed in some drum tracks. So we're going to start off with vocal tracks and I've got this vocal here. I was mixing it today and I kept hearing these sort of crackly, fizzy, long Fs, which is not something that I come across very often, but it was a pretty big problem in this song. So let's hear it. And on the knife edge of your own design. All right, so this, uh, where is it? Right here. Knife edge of your that F is really, really sort of crackly or spitty. What I like to do in this situation is to make a split on either side of that, and I'll probably fade it out a little bit overlap and we're going to use some item effects in here so i'm just dragging that to extend it and holding shift to move the crossfade so now i'm going to use some item effects and i have a media item button for item effects so i'll just add effects and actually i've saved an effects chain for this um, already so that's remove f and let's look at the plugin and it's a about a 12 dB shelf, and I've reduced the overall volume by 10. Here it is after the effect. Knife edge of your and with it off, knife edge of you can hear that really spitty, crackly sort of sound is pretty much taken out completely, and it's very seamless, in my opinion. Let's move it back a bit. And you dance on the knife edge of your own design while the clock tick time. I think there was another one here. While the clock tick time. This one we can probably use the same trick. So I'm just going into uh, re EQ. And I can use either a low shelf or a high pass. Let's try it something like this, just to kind of clean up this item here. While the clock tick time. While the clock tick. While the clock tick time. And it's pretty subtle. I could I could probably even do it here. And one quick way of copying that over is just clicking and dragging the effects button. And this is really kind of nitpicky stuff. Uh, but sometimes it makes a really big difference in the mix. Of your own design, while the clock tick time. All right, let's scroll over to another section of the song where uh, I've done something a little bit different. So, so here's one I did earlier in a different section of the song, and it's basically the same thing, a little more extreme. I've got this low shelf cutting everything out at... 4700 hertz so here it is but you never had time to face the elephant that was the one that really made me want to go in and and investigate this problem let's hear that with the eq turned off but you never had time to face the elephant yeah so that's the worst one in the entire song and i think this worked pretty well to get rid of it so i'm cutting out all the lows which is a little counterintuitive because that the sound is really more in the high end but this is what i found worked so again with it on you never had time to face the elephant it just works a lot better it doesn't stand out in the mix as sort of like a crunchy distortion and i also wanted to show you a p pop and i've got some of them I've got one somewhere here's one so this is just a, a plosive and i've got a very similar sort of eq on it uh, but much lower. It's This is just a really low frequency, uh, there's a puff of air. So I'll bypass that and you can hear it. But I know. And with this EQ, just at uh, it's 100 hertz. But I know that and I could probably go a bit higher with that. Let's bump that up to 190. But I know that and we could even do a little of automation in here. This is the take volume automation, which is pre-effects. But I know that there are 
fucking thing. So that's much smoother. Uh, just a lot more control o over these sorts of sounds. This vocal has a lot of compression on it, so every little detail matters because it's just as loud as the loudest note. I also want to show you in a drum mix where this trick can be uh, used. So I'm just going to scroll this over so we're revealing the original audio. So this is a drum kit, it's an editing project, and it's pretty roughly mixed. Uh, but there's some quick bleed during this section, it's just a, supposed to be a sustain. So you can hear it right here in the sustain. So my solution was very similar. A re -EQ on the media item effects, but I'm actually rolling off the high end and the CQ. You just roll it around until that offensive sound comes out. Uh, so this is 2.2 kilohertz. Because there are 12 or 14 drum tracks here, there is a trick to getting that so that you only need to do it once. So I set it up on the first item and then I ran the action. It's actually a script copy effects of item under mouse to selected items active takes. But here's the thing. If I'm running this from the action list, uh, it's looking for the item that's under the mouse. So it's not really going to work, but I run it anyways. And then I use a different action, which is this one, repeat the most recent action. So now when I mouse over it, it will actually copy the effect to all the other items that are selected. So it works really, really well. That little effects button, where do you get it? How do you see that on your items? So that's in preferences and appearance media. And we're looking at this here, per take effects and no effects. So click on no effects. And then there will be this little effects icon here where my mouse is. So that's easier access to get to the effects chain. And one other thing I should say about this is because we're doing a long fade in on this item, it's essentially making a, an automation move like this because we're fading from an item without an effect to an item that has the effect. So it's essentially doing that sort of move at the same time. So that's it guys. That's my trick for using EQ while editing audio. And it's one of the great features about Reaper. We can have effects chains on every single item. We can split an item into a million pieces and each piece can have its own effect chain. And it doesn't take a lot of CPU or RAM to do that. We don't have to commit it uh, to the item permanently. So that's it for this video. Thanks a lot for watching. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Follow me on Facebook and Twitter. Support the Reaper blog through Patreon and visit reaperblog.net for a lot more tutorials.